Exoplanetary, the adventures of the space-faring Wolverton family and their friends far in the future. Tonight's episode, Castle. Where am I? Are you waking up? I was concerned. I was supposed to be looking for someone. I... I was on my way somewhere. Is the room blurry for you as well? well? I have good vision for a retired pilot. I don't wear glasses. Maybe I'm just dehydrated. I thought I carried a water bottle, but I only have this replacement bottle of Chanel number five. A replacement bottle? What happened to the first one? I used it to... Uh, it seems that my vision isn't the only thing that's blurry. My memory is fuzzier than the fuzziest critter in the petting zoo. Here's a cup of water. Oh, thank you. I could use another when this is done. Thank you. But of course, another cup coming up. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Now I recognize you. Oh, your voice was so familiar. <laughs> well, I, I suppose I'm still rather well known. I'm not talking about your celebrity. Come here, baby. Whoa! Oh my, but you're friendly. You're the woman I got the perfume for. Don't tell me I showed up before we met. Do you remember? I rescued you from that island, Nikumororo. Yes. Yes, yes, I helped you repair your plane, then I co-piloted on the last leg of your first round-the-world trip, then I proposed, and you came back with me to the 26th century. Remember? I, I suppose nature does abhor a vacuum. Does that mean we, uh, yes? Oh, murder. Now. Tell me what else you think would be a good idea for the new exoplanetary. Uh, we're just brainstorming. No wrong answers. Oof. Well, how do you feel about people owning their own residences? Home ownership? That's ah, almost crazy enough to work. Not every idea in the 20th century aged poorly. I suppose the residence here makes you think about that. All these comfy couches and such. It is a rather conspicuous example of your wealth. You know, now that the exoports are sending humans to every corner of the universe, palaces like this asteroid will become more common. I'm not sure that turning every human being into the caste of Dynasty is necessarily a step in the right direction. Oh, I always figured you as more of a Dallas fan. You got me. Oh yeah, I know you. You like the twists and turns, and the cliffhangers, not to mention the amorous side plots. Why did you bring me to the residence, Peter? I thought we were supposed to get down to business. Mm, we are. I just thought it might be nice, now that we're reunited, we could, you know, break a little bubbly against the bow of the ship. Get off me! Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, you nearly dislocated my jaw. Just because I look like an ordinary woman doesn't mean I'm not carrying a punch made of crystal and titanium. Well, I've got surprises of my own. No more, Peter. You stepped on your own necktie about an hour ago, mentioning violon and planet dancer. Earlier, you were supposed to be ignorant of the exo-traveler's experiences. Oh, you'll have to excuse me for not packing my computer brain. You mean paying attention? Please. Oh, I guess I'm a little overwhelmed, what with having the family over. <gasps> what have you done, Peter? It was me, actually. Daddy trusts me to handle the dirty work. Say, are you my new mommy? Alice, meet my lovely daughter, Estelle. Oh, she'd shake your hand, but hers seemed to be covered with blood. Yes, out, damn spot! <laughs> Turned your daughter into a, 
a mass murderer. Edgar and Grant were horrible people, but they didn't, they didn't deserve to be massacred. Hey, I'm a self-made woman over here. I did all this yesterday morning, actually. I just like returning to the scene and rearranging the bodies every few hours. Oh, these crazy kids today. I've seen enough. I don't know what possessed you both to do this. But you're not going to get away with it. Gee, what's Ms. 20th Century gonna do, Daddy? Call Lieutenant Columbo. <laughs> oh, 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 excuse me, uh, folks. So just one more thing. Eh? <laughs> Fine. You won't take me seriously. I'll just have to throw off the kid gloves. Ooh, sparkly, Daddy. I want one. <coughs> Keep going. This way to the orphanage. Dad, I can barely see what's ahead. I can't tell what's a wall and what's a door anymore. It kind of makes me wish I took that other job. <laughs> what job? <laughs> I was going to be a fireman when I grew up. <laughs> Don't give up. I've been through worse. <laughs> We've got to get out of the smoke. Hunch over like I am. The fresh air is closer to the ground. Before long, we're going to be crawling. <laughs> That's how I got this job. <laughs> You've gone far enough, landlubber. <laughs> what the... Pirate? Oh, <laughs> hell no! The smoke's clearing! So is the oxygen. I think he shot a hole in the wall. Something's got to go right today! Take this, you pirate looking! Arrgh! A He's gone. We can get through. Through here is the Orpheus! Thank goodness! Ishmael, Condola, you made it. Nearly didn't. Ran into a pirate friend of yours. I zapped him, but he got away. What are all these androids doing here? I've been using the Orpheus as a hub to send them after people trapped in the debris. But if Long John Silver's here... Be careful. I will be. Oh, one more thing. My friend August is around here somewhere. Don't worry. We'll put them to work. Of course. I'll be back to help. Attention, Attention all aboard, aboard Cortez-1. Cortez one. This, this station, station is, is under attack. attack. Many, Many floors, floors are filling with smoke. smoke. We are sending help. Androids are programmed to assist. They, they will, will have, have oxygen and carry you if needed. If you are on an upper floor, evacuate to the nearest ship. If you have no ship, come here. We are on board the Orpheus. We must prepare to abandon this base station. This is Dr. Elliot Hanscom aboard the Conquistador. We are also equipped to take survivors on board. Orpheus, if you have any medical androids on hand, we have a full infirmary and surgery on board. I'm not a medical doctor, but I'm doing my best to treat the injured until relief arrives. Gosh, he even sounds good looking. I mean, hello, Brother Dustin aboard the Valare. We're ready to take any survivors too. Copy that, my friend. Brace yourself for a bunch of people. Right. Now that we've done that, I just need to adjust this and this and... <laughs> Hello, universe! This is Brother Dustin, and this is a very different sort of podcast. We're doing this now. That voice in your left channel is my head advisor, Mother Invention, and in your right ear is... Your advisor who is a head. It's okay. I get to make that sort of joke. You don't. And we're recording from the bridge of the starship Valare, participating in the evacuation of the Cortez-1. We've discovered that this space station, which employs hundreds of workers, appears to have been damaged by a bomb. What have we learned from our diagnostics, am I? These readings show us that there are no fire safety measures in place in the lower part of the space station, where most of the staff both work and live. So they are losing their homes. MV here. These homes are currently located in the Andromeda Galaxy, transported light years from humanity's planetary system of origin. Now let's put that into context, MV. That means that even if these workers are able to survive the disaster and evacuate, there's no way back to a system with human-ready amenities without using the exoports. And that sounds expensive, doesn't it? 
How much does a trip through the exoports cost? A year's salary. That's why for many people, the exoport represents a one-way trip they've been saving years to experience, all to settle on a new world and work for themselves. So, people have the option of working for a company that isn't necessarily looking out for your safety, or squirreling away your money and trying your luck on some other planet nobody's ever heard of. Am I wrong in thinking that's a ridiculous choice? What's worse, did you know that Exo sent me to the planet Earth? Do you know why? I'll tell you. Are you sure it's a good idea to share this? Am I? You were the one who set me straight all that time ago. Earth spent five centuries renewing from mass industrialization, with only a few million people scattered around the globe living in Bronze Age conditions. The world became lush and green again. Exo planned to turn the Earth into a luxury home for their executives. They wanted to turn Europe into a golf course. What's more, they planned to enslave the people living there now. That's true? That really happened? It's true. I was there. There's so much to catch you up on. But we discovered that the humans who survived in the ruined world became superhumans, with increased strength and abilities. It's tempting to call them superheroes, but the truth is that they're just people trying to be themselves. That's all any of us are, am I? Ordinary people trying to live our little lives. So why must we take for granted the idea that there must be someone obstructing our way? But you're just one person, Brother Dustin. How can one person hope to contend with a giant corporation like Exoplanetary? Or any of the other super corporations? Or even the church? Let's not forget that they've done a great deal to prop up the power structure over the centuries. My friend, Brother Kermit, with with his dying words, told me to do something to stop this madness. To tell people to organize and fight for the dignity of the individual and against the power of wealth. We need to have oversight of these businesses for them to contribute to the well-being of all, for them to pay part of their profits in taxes to a government that keeps them from exploiting their workers. What's more, we need to organize independently to better look after ourselves. People of the universe, we've abdicated this responsibility long enough. I call for full and fair elections on every heavenly body that supports life, in every satellite and space station, and in every direction the spaceways stretch. We must do this to exert the freedom we have so long handed over to exoplanetary and other entities. The time is now. 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 You should should come come with me peacefully. peacefully. I don't don't want to hurt you. Stand back. My drones would be happy to scratch you up. There are no authorities in space, Alice. There's exosecurity, and that's about it. We pay them to protect us from people like you. You'd have to kill us. I don't think she has it in her, does she, Dad? She does not. Don't doubt it. I could crush you both. I just just prefer prefer to get you into a hospital where you both belong. How very noble of you. How very humane. There's nothing wrong with humanity. (laughs) The problems of humanity relate to mortality. We're doomed to die. So we either cast aside the flesh or we armor it. For now, I choose the latter. What the? Look how all the parts fly onto him. Alice, meet my war suit. Uh, You probably knew it in its previous function as- That's Peter's body! My Peter! The Exo-Traveler! Yes, indeed. I recalled him home, and then I cracked him open like a can of peaches and destroyed the Traveler unit inside. And then I hollowed out a spot for me and made a war suit that will allow me to go toe-to-toe with you. Bring what you got, Alice. I'm ready to take you down and make a matching war suit for my dear Estelle. <laughs> Show yourself, Overton. 
I can hear your heartbeat. How did you know it was mine? I've never known your heart rate to raise, even slightly, even in combat. It's good to avoid getting too worked up, don't you think? <laughs> You're here to put me down, are you? Like a rabbit street cur. I've only ever wanted you to work with me, Silver. If not... Have at ye then! If you're man enough. I'm not afraid of you, Peter. I've beaten an exo-traveler before. But not one who had one of these. It's a simplified version of the process you use to bring Dorothy's exo-traveler to heal. Now this one just has to puncture through your body and make contact with the exo-traveler probe. In a wink, your existence blinks out. And I get to wear you like a mink stole. She's not strong enough to puncture me. That's why I have these. My little friends are gonna stake you through the heart like a vampire. I'm wasting my time here. Playing with me is just what you both want. Meanwhile, there's people struggling to survive downstairs. I've seen enough up here. Maybe there's no justice for people like you, Peter. But there's also no sense in me wasting any more of my existence following you around. We'll just kill more people, Alice. Who do you think set off that bomb? Or you might think you can walk away, Alice, but we aren't through. Oh, I'll say we aren't. Only next time, I'll be smart enough to have some backup. I'll see you then. Daddy! She's leaving! I see that. She's less driven by her emotions than I expected. You told me I was getting a war suit like you! You promised! I want it! You'll have it before the day is through. We need to get downstairs. Come on. What are you two doing here in my lab? Are, are you survivors? I, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you... Ah! Dr. Hanscom, I presume. Dr. Hanscom? I was just touring your lab when I heard your distress message. I made a batch of my special burn gel. Burn gel? Yes! This is just the first batch, of course. You spread it on burns like a salve. Then you pop a bit of it in your mouth and chew it like bubblegum. It draws particles you might have inhaled from the smoke. It's spearmint flavored. My suggestion. This is brilliant. <laughs> I can only assume that I'm standing before Professor Cassandra Wolverton. This is truly a great honor. Your work means so much to me. And what you- Steady on, Dr. Hanscom. Time for the backslapping collegiality after we resolve the matter at hand. Of course. What a stroke of luck. It's funny. I don't remember you being quite so famous. The recognition is gratifying, but it does get in the way of things sometimes. More spearmint oil, please. Here you go. I suppose these changes will take some getting used to. Not sure what changes you could mean. We're just two adventurers enjoying the universe. We're engaged to be married. Nothing could be clearer. So you don't remember anything about earlier today with the gross mice? Trinket! Mice. We're helping with an emergency. Later, please. Of, of course. I'll, uh, I'll just see what else I can do over on the bridge. It's, it's strange. I, I know that Calvert Wolverton should be here. This woman seems to have replaced him completely. I have a distinct memory of Calvert, but I'm now recalling things that happened with Cassandra at the same time. I remember my betrayal of Calvert. I, I feel that guilt still making my heart pound. But I, I seem to have this new life without consequences. I, I, I must keep Calvert in my mind. Time could make me forget him entirely as it heals itself. I must keep him very much in mind. And when this catastrophe clears, I must convince Cassandra to help me find him. Am I? I think we need to send you in with the other androids. MV and I can coordinate from here. I'm just charging up this oxygen tank and I am out the door. 
Alice? Alice, you're back! Dustin! I heard you over the emergency comms, but I thought it was too good to be true. After all this time, you're still alive! Uh, really? Did, did none of you honestly ever hear about my apparently very well-known podcast? What's a podcast? You of all people should know what a podcast is. You're, you're always talking about old pop culture stuff. Once you party like it's 1999, that's her cutoff point. It's true. Someone told me that in the 21st century, Morrissey becomes a fascist jerk, and then the world ends, so I decided to skip it. Uh, either way, it, it, it's so good to see you. Yes, time for a quick hug. Hello there. Oh! <laughs> it looks like we've made a new friend. Uh, how did you turn up? Someone asked Mother Invention if she wanted a little head. No, we're not making that joke. Sorry. <laughs> She's basically a sister Zeta Alpha unit and part of my search for Catherine. Really? Yes, we were just about to network. A network? Like what we did? Sort of. That's what gave me the idea. Mother Invention and I have essentially the same brain, only she has her experiences and I have mine. If we network, I can hook myself up to the Volari computers and keep her apprised while she helps guide the rescue efforts. Fascinating. We can do this now? I'm ready to go. Let's do it. Contact. Contact! Network established. Getting word from the Orpheus that Ben Wolverton was last seen heading deeper into the station. Ben's here too? Next thing you'll be telling me Cal- uh, Cassandra dropped in as well. Uh, okay, I'll go for Ben. Got it. Let's go. Am I? What you've experienced and, and, and what you've discovered about yourself, ourselves, it's fascinating. Time for that later, okay? Yes, of course, but isn't it strange? Don't you feel more whole, more together now that we're networked? It's as if there are parts of the person I was in you, aspects that I haven't connected to in a very long time. We have to stay focused. Sorry, it's just... Sorry. No apologies needed, sister. Just stay strong. I know it's in for a workout today. I can defend any blow you strike, Wolverton. I shall not tire. Androids aren't perfect, Silver. I'll eventually find your weakness. Once you're dead, I will claim my own prize. The Conquistador will be mine to plunder the spaceways. It won't come to that. Oh, Wolverton. Don't be too sure of that. I have drawn you into a convocation of me shipmates. You what? No. There he is. The man my poor, belated brother sent on a wild goose chase. I'm afraid you have me at a disadvantage. Peter Kidding. Nice to meet you. My brother was the late lamented Grant Kidding, former CEO of Exoplanetary Corporation. With his passing, I'm taking his role, his late brother's role, and my late father's role as well. You're saying that the entire Exo Executive Suite is dead? Assassinated by me! You. I remember you from the day the theme park was attacked. Yes, Exoplanetary Land. The happiest, happiest place, place in, in the, the universe. universe. That was also me. And what surrounds you, Ben, is what remains of the organization that gave you your mission. It also happens to be the organization you were tasked with destroying. You? Chaturanga? An arachnidian, an android, and two aristocrats? Oh, don't say it like that. The joke goes, what do you call this act? <laughs> the, the aristocrats! aristocrats. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's true. The lineup has changed over the years, but here we are. Estelle, of course, is the queen. And queens don't curtsy, dear. Professor Ernst here is our bishop, hmm, moving money into our research efforts. And Long John Silver is our knight. I'm afraid our rook was sacrificed earlier today. All part of removing one of your pieces from the board. We're going to take another one in a minute or two. Uh, now, now, no sneak previews for our sworn enemies, darling. They're all facing certain doom, and that should suffice. I don't enjoy this taunting. Let's just kill him and be done with it. I don't understand why any of you would work with Chaturanga. It doesn't make any sense. Human intervention caused an interplanetary war on my home planet. 
Now we are rebuilding. My society can stand on the back of yours this time. You see, it all makes sense. Professor, take a stell with you. It's time we finished our business here. So, this makes you the White King, I suppose. I must make you feel like a big man. Pardon me? You don't expect me to believe that this ad hoc group is the same Chaturanga that destroyed the Callisto Five colony? The feared group that blew up the Oberon Underground? There's no way that you could be the group that pulled a red wedding on the Shoheen Corporation. Uh, crippled my mother? The very same, Ben. It gives me all the satisfaction in the world to let you know that I was the boy in the tent. What? No. When I was young, I learned that the most profitable business in human history was that of war. But with no countries to go to war with, there only remained the task of cultivating an enemy. I knew that an alien race was too far-fetched. Any alien civilization advanced enough to reach the solar system also outmatched us totally. So I brought back an ancient boogeyman of capitalism, a far-left terrorist group. They would target and kill the elites, causing them to pour money into the tools of war, items for Exo to sell to the very competitors I was killing. You've been killing your own executives for that long? Well, nobody vital, just incompetence. Plenty of Fredos in every wealthy family. Uh, Technically, your mother was an exoplanetary employee. The boy in the tent. How did you know about that? As I said, I was there. I crushed a chess man into the ground, releasing the nerve gas that crippled your mother. And there was no sign of me in the aftermath. I noticed old mommy was a little vague about that in her book. She didn't want to encourage copycats. And because she wanted to be certain if she ever saw me again. It is you. After all this time. I had a great deal to thank your mother for, though. Chaturanga was too small in focus. The other plan we had in place at the same time will eventually do more to bring us war profits. What other plan? The exoplanetary protocols, of course. My brothers took long enough to make them work. I knew they would eventually. When our father saw the full scope of what we'd done, he got out of town, became some sort of hermit, and just me left. It really is sad, in a way. They couldn't be here to see us on the cusp of success. I can't let you. Of course, I expect you to struggle. It's not fun if you don't try to wriggle out of it. But that's for Silver to handle. I have to settle an argument with your sister. What does that mean? Farewell, Ben Wolverton. You almost got me concerned. Come back here! No, Ben Wolverton. You go no further. You're here to keep me from stopping him. In a fashion. In your final moments, Wolverton, take comfort in knowing that I never could have beat ye without cheating. Let me pass, Silver. Let me pass. <laughs> ah! <laughs> take that! <laughs> Cassandra? Yes, love? Tell me about your siblings. What's to tell? Alice is now an exo-traveler. She uses the term post-human. Ben has his fixation on androids, which I'm sure is compensating for something. But now he seems to be getting back into security work. And Brother Dustin is Brother Dustin. He thinks he's saving the world from whatever couch he's sleeping on. I I just remember there was another one. Don't you remember? No, that's it. A, B, C, D for Alice, Ben, Cassandra, and Dustin. Just the four of us. Wasn't wasn't there a, a Calvert? No. That would have messed up Mom's alphabet thing. I remember hearing quite a bit about a Calvert. Trinket, we're busy manufacturing ointments and other helpful things for three ships worth of survivors. We can discuss this later, okay? Only I think this is important now, and worth talking about now. Why is that? I I think we were attacked. I think something happened, something related to time. Something erased a person out of time. 
this, this Calvert I'm referring to, and we need to rescue him. What you're talking about would be incredibly difficult. It wouldn't just happen on its own. Well, what about this device here, this quantum scalpel? Could it do that? In theory, but it would take skill that nobody has. And if he were erased from time, time would try to patch it up with someone else. You see? Impossible. I can't locate Ben anywhere. Do you have a read on him, am I? We're getting close to getting everyone on board. But some ships have already left. There's still a handful of life signs here and there, but they're deep in the station. I need to get there, then. Oh, just be careful, Alice. We're going to need to get moving soon. It's, it's hard to say how long this rock will hold together. I hear you, am I? Oh, wait. I've, I have a voice message from Ben right here. This is ridiculous. Do you know why I told you that, Wolverton? About your being the greater swordsman? I don't care. Let me pass. Because Peter Kidding knew I'd ultimately never kill you. I'd never earn the conquistador by my own code of honor. I could cheat, use my android strength against you. But that would have been too far, even for a brigand like me. You know, I could get you a spaceship. Financing can be very reasonable. Shortly, it will only be Davy Jones's locker for me, Wolverton. What does that mean? I'm Chaturanga's latest sacrifice piece. He set my self-destruct protocol. He what? Let me through! No! Silver, all I've ever wanted for you and androids like you is a peaceful existence. Well, you don't have to die for people like Peter Kidding. Tell me at least... Why you couldn't simply work with me? Ah, you're a white knight to the last breath. Androids will be their own liberators, Ben Wolverton. Your efforts to save them represent your own arrogance. A god complex, perhaps. I'm no psychologist. Oh. Oh. It's nearly over. Make your peace. No more words. Fine. Alice, it's Ben. There's something you need to know. Peter Kidding. He's apparently in charge of Exo now. What very few people know is that he's also the head of Chaturanga. He's the actual White King. The one Mom told us about. The, the boy of the tent. He's the actual White King. The one Mom told us about. The boy in the tent. Don't ask me how I found out. I don't have time to explain. That's all I have to say. Uh, I love you. Give my love to Dustin and to Calvert. I mean, because it's strange. Look after Ben. Look after Ben. The theme oh God. Ben. Oh God. Don't be dead. Goodbye. Ben. Ben, is that you? Ben, tell me where you are. I can. I can. Uh, afraid it's not Ben, darling. Are you in the mood to talk? Oh my. Let me close your eyes. Find your way to heaven, mister. Put in a good word for me. Just another explosion, folks. Don't get worked up. We're nearly out of here. I hope you're right. I just had another one die on me. Condola, baby. I'll be fine. But this situation, it's got me thinking about Petrichor. What about Petrichor? What if something bad happens when we settle there? What if something worse happens? Nothing worse than this is going to happen. It's a whole planet. Something bad's gonna happen. Then we'll deal with it. Then we'll just deal with it? Just like that? It's not just like that, but our training. You have to admit it took over, didn't it? It did. I don't like to admit it, but it truly did. Things would have gone much worse if we hadn't been here to look after these people. And if that's ever necessary on Petrichor, we handle it. Because that's who we are, baby. Oh, Dad. We gotta get out of this place. 
I've got a bad feeling the worst is not over yet. Look, Alice, it's a real bummer about Ben. I, I know he was your brother and all. I Where are you, Peter? Perfectly safe. Nearby. That's good. We have unfinished business. Mm, hear that noise, babe? That was the sound of our business finishing. Not hardly. Uh, that explosion that killed Ben, it took out the gravity stabilizers. Now, that's not just the thing that keeps us from floating around, but also the thing that keeps us in orbit. You're insane. Oh, not hardly, as you said. I, I'm going to GTFO and go get something to eat, you see? That nobody tells you how much terrorism works on your appetite. Meanwhile, you, your other two siblings, and all your other friends are going to crash into that gas giant we've been looking at for the last couple of days. We have our spaceships. Yeah, but physics don't really work like that. Your ships are fine to deal with the gravitational pull of an asteroid, or maybe a planet. But the gas giant has a pull like you wouldn't believe. The orbit's going to decay and probably crush you all into paste before you even reach the atmosphere. Peter, I don't care what you've done. I won't rest until I send you to hell. Mm, funny you mention hell. I imagine you'll be there to greet me. Hey, pick a nice cabana, will you? Ta-ta, baby! I've been through entirely too much to let something like gravity stop me now. I will not stop. I will not fail. Everything changes. Now. You have been listening to Exoplanetary, Castling, written by C. Christopher Hart, performed by Furiel Elliott as Alice Wolverton, David Loftus as Ben Wolverton, Winnie Hugh as Cassandra Wolverton, Bobby Eversman as Brother Dustin, Stephanie Leet as Mother Invention and Mother Vinegar, Sky Stafford as Amelia Earhart, Stephanie Steffi D. Harvey as Condola Yacoub. Kenneth Dimble as Ishmael Yacoub. Rob Bakours as Peter. Roxy Diamond as Estelle Kidding. Heidi Stefan as the Venerable August Rutherford. Michael Burles as Dr. Handsome and Chef Carmen. Kyle Stroud as Professor Ernst and Chef Tony. And Sam A. Mowry as Long John Silver. Script consultant, Ash Freeman. Produced by C. Christopher Hart. Music provided by Jacob Jansen. Additional music by Daniel D. Dowell. Sound effects by Danger Marshall. This play, the characters, situations, and associated intellectual property. Copyright 2021 to 2022 by C. Christopher Hart. All rights reserved. Recorded at the Willamette Radio Workshop in sunny Portland, Oregon.